Okay, so next question, I think the last one for now, is using the molecular orbital model to predict bond order and paramagnetism. Use those to predict bond order and paramagnetism. I'm going to click on that. I have, not made, I have not prepared my whiteboard yet for this, so I'm going to click on that. Bring the camera over here. Print screen. Start the whiteboard up. Boom. File. Add image. All right, let's go here. Right, there you go. Add the image. All right, so here we go. Using the MO uh, bond model to predict bond order and paramagnetism. Decide whether each. All right, we've got to do all e each of these. I did, actually, these I did in class. So, but hopefully, uh, this additional video will will make it even better for you. So we're supposed to decide if it's stable or not. Uh, B two, O two, two minus, and H two. So I suppose if it's stable or not and uh, if it's diamagnetic or paramagnetic and what the bond order is, okay? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go, oh, let's do H2 first. That's the simplest, all right? H2 is the simplest. I'm going to come here. Whoops, come over here. Close that down. All right. So remember now when we're doing the, we, in order to, to make these predictions, we need the molecular orbital. diagram okay so that is the one hydrogen atoms over here this is the 1s and this is the 1s orbital of the other the atomic orbit of the other uh, hydrogen atom and they combine right LCAO to make bonding orbitals and this is going to be a Sigma 1s this will be a Sigma 1s star right Now, hydrogen only has electrons in these 1s's. They both come in with one electron, right? One electron. And they combine together to make these two uh, orbitals combine to make molecular orbitals. Molecular orbitals. Okay? So, one is an antibonding, and one is a bonding. Okay? Well, there's only two electrons, so they both go down here. That's gone because I moved it. That's gone because I moved it. And so this is the molecular orbital diagram for H2. Now tell me, how many orbitals are filled? One orbital is filled. Bonding orbital. Right? And so that makes the bond order, it's, remember, it's uh, and minus n star divided by 2 is the bond order right and n is the number of electrons in in a bonding orbital and star is the number of electrons in an antibonding orbital and so in this case it's 2 minus 0 over 2 which is 1 which is exactly what you would expect you have one single bond right and so the hydrogen is going to look like that you have a single bond so we know the bond order. That was one of the questions. Uh, we know that there are no unpaired electrons. See, there's uh, all electrons have a buddy, right? It's the buddy system. There's no unpaired electrons. And so since it's, there are no unpaired electrons, it is not paramagnetic. It's diamagnetic. And I forget what the other question. Oh, is it stable? And yeah, if the bond order is greater than zero, it's stable. So we're good. Let's go back here now. Um, H2. Is H2, is it stable? Yes, it is stable, right? We saw that, that uh, the bond order is greater than zero. Uh, is it diamagnetic or paramagnetic? It's diamagnetic because there were no unpaired electrons, right? No unpaired. And what's the bond order? The bond order was 1. Okay? So let's do O2 to minus. Let's come back over here. Come back over here. Uh, let's just make a new one. So let's make a new one. Come back here. We're doing O2. This is this time it's O2 to minus, okay? So O2 is in the second uh, period. 1s, 2s. 
2p, and it's greater, I'm not going to draw the other one over here, it's greater than um, 6a, it's actually in 6a, and so that means that the sigmas and the pi's are going to be like this, right? I'm only drawing the one half of it. Okay. Uh, to keep things clean, let's go through here. This is the sigma 1s, sigma 1s star, sigma 2s, sigma 2s star, sigma 2p, pi 2p, pi 2p star, oops, I spelled that wrong, 2p, and sigma 2p star, okay? Now, let's go through and pretend like we've got, uh, I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna, you've got the same thing over here. These are, are drawn twice, right? And it's, it's period six, so there's four electrons there. I mean, it's group six. Let me go back here and verify that. Group six. Group six. It's oxygen. Yep. Right there. There it is. Come back here. Okay, but we have two extra electrons. So we'll do those two electrons last, all right? So these all get filled. Thank you very much. Wow. So I've got, I've got four electrons. And there's four more over here, which I haven't drawn. So I need to draw eight, but then there's two more because of these, right? So I need to draw 10 electrons. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Aha, okay. So again, I've got four here, and four here, and two here. These are 10 that have got to go in the, in, the, um, in the P, right? And if you count up all the electrons, you'll see that we have the right number for that two minus, okay? That, all right, that said, let's, let's do bond order first. Bond order is equal to N minus N star over two, okay? So I've got all these n's and n stars even out. So I'm not even going to count those up. But I see here I've got 6 minus 4. 6 minus 4. I'm just doing these up here because I see these are all even now, right? 6 minus 4 over 2, which gives 2 over 2. So I've got a bond order of 1. I can't see, you can't, uh, in the way here. One, let me bring my one over here. Is that okay with you? Bam. All right, so it's got a bond order of one. And I see that the bond order is greater than zero, so it's stable. And I also see that there are no unpaired electrons. Therefore, this is diamagnetic. In other words, it is not magnetic, okay? All right, so let's go back over here. Oh, wait, let's go back, not there, but to here. And we see that this was diamagnetic, right? And it's bond, it is stable, yes it is, and its bond order was one. All right, that's weird, isn't it? Okay, and finally let's do boron. Now this is getting a bit of a long video, but it's worth it. Okay, where's boron? Right here. So let's get rid of that and boron. We're gonna go, I'm gonna try to go a little faster here. Boron is, um, it's right here. It's in group three. No, I don't wanna do that. I wanna come here. It's in group three. This is a little bit deceptive, right? Because this is an antibonding orbital, so it's higher than that 1s. 
but I'm a little concerned for space here. All right, and so what what we need to know now is this is in group uh, three because it's in group it's in it's five, so it's going to look like oops, whoa, 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 whoa. It's going to be just a second here. Right, recall that. Remember that. Okay, let me show you. Let me remind you where I got that. Where is it here? Recognizing, counting, drawing more like for, for period two. This was a. Um, let's go back over here now. Remember this. Let's look at the explanation. Right, that's where that comes from because it's in group three. Right, so the pi is going to be lower than the sigma. Right, the one s's get filled first. Then the two S's, right? And the two P's start to fill up, but it's the pi that gets filled first in, in ones that are 5A or lower. Um, that's sort of an interesting reason why, but we're not going to get into it. All right, that's, that's why I drew it like this. Okay, now boron, 2S, 2P. And I'm not going to draw, so I'm going to draw the one atomic orbitals here, but I'm not going to draw the other ones here. Just keep things clean. Now let's go through and label these. This is sigma 1s, sigma 1s star, sigma 2s, sigma 2, 2s star, pi 2p, sigma 2p. No, not star, sorry. Pi 2, 2p star, sigma 2p star, okay? Now boron has got the 1s is filled, 2s, and it's only in group 3, right? So that's all, you, that's all we got. And I think it was neutral is what we're looking at. Let me get rid of this for a second, go back here. B2, it's neutral. All right, let's just verify this. I'm going to go back and look at the periodic table. Periodic table is here. Boron's here, right? So look at it. It's got its 1s, or 1s is up here, 2s, 2p1. That's exactly right. So that's all I've got. And I've got another one over here. So what this means is, I said I wasn't gonna draw it, but okay. What that means is that these two electrons actually get, wow, in two, separate orbitals. So we do have unpaired electrons. Aha! Two unpaired electrons. Para magnetic. Paramagnetic, okay? So its bond order now is going to be N minus N star over 2. These guys all cancel each other, so I don't need to get that. But here I've got, aha, 2 minus 0, because these are all in the uh, uh, bonding orbitals, right? Over 2, which is equal to 1. So its bond order is 1. That means it's stable. And it's got two unpaired electrons. Wow. You know, you, don't, you, you just don't expect that. I don't expect it. Okay. Is it stable? Where am I here? Let's go here. Yes, it's stable because its bond order is one. It's paramagnetic though, right? Because it had two unpaired electrons and its bond order was simply one. All right, so we went through that uh, a few times. We did it with neon in a different video. So hopefully hopefully uh, the molecular orbital diagrams are, you're getting used to those. They're super helpful. They seem a, a little bit esoteric, but actually they, they give a lot of information for uh, the little bit of trouble we have to go through uh, to get them. So hope that's helpful. I'll close this video out and we'll wait for your next request.